I've decided to combine the final three maps, Meltdown, Cargo, and Aftermath. These maps are symmetrical and I use the same route on both sides for each map and I figured instead of making three individual videos about maps no one gives a shit about, I'd just make one big one, briefly explaining everything. These maps have by far the lowest success rate of solo or even team capping out of any of the maps and I will explain why for all of them. First, we'll cover Meltdown. For both sides, go around the non-reactor side of the map by the water. Be cautious in your approach, but if you don't see anyone by the time you get to the stairs, assume no one will flank you. I suggest staying in aiming down the sights mode as you walk up the stairs. Do your best to clear out the enemy, shooting, grenades, use everything. Then try capping. There is no best direction to look, just listen for gunfire and turn that direction. Doing this solo is close to impossible. If you cap, just run away, get out of there, because the enemy should be coming back if they aren't already there. Going in through the window is definitely an option as well, but only if you are fast enough. Aim through the doorway to catch anyone doing the same. Most times, you shouldn't need to worry about someone coming up the long way since no one ever does it but I don't blame you if you want to check it out. My team tries to cap and dies because of someone waiting in the reactor, but I kill him and amazingly manage to cap. I stay in the area waiting for retaliation. I kill two more trying to cap, and now I can move into their side of the map to start harassing. The reason I go around the outside instead of in the window is right here. This guy rushes quickly and goes into the room I would have gone in if I climbed in the window. I probably would have died. No one checks the very outside. Honestly, if the enemy was paying attention, I should have died here, so there are definitely elements of luck to this, plus I had a teammate help cap. Instead, the enemy chooses to chase someone down for a kill instead of trying to help get us off B. And then I kill him. Why this is nearly impossible to cap solo? There are just so many routes to B that it's impossible to predict anything. The reactor usually houses people waiting, then there's the ramp side, then there are people who just show up late, and then lastly, there are just snipers in the building watching the flag. If you're laying prone, you're basically a free kill for anyone who approaches you from any other direction other than the one that you're looking at. There are also explosions all over the place. Spend the rest of the game on their side of the map if possible. The building can create a lot of distraction, and people will chase you all over the place if you're killing them. Snipers, usually free kills. Now time for cargo. I've had the most success with the smoke rush. On seaside, this is a lot harder to pull off, because the first crate that lifts up is the one that you don't want to lift up, the one on A side. You need to be able to win gunfights in order for this to work. Plus, you need the enemy to not send a lot of people to B. If all that happens, you're in good shape, but it's really tough. I had another clip, which I'd be showing right now if it wasn't thanks to theater mode not recording the game, where a non-smoke rush worked. If you're on C side, you can cap C and then run straight up the middle and watch A side. Kill people as they walk in, you need to get here before they do. From there, if the coast looks clear, you can attempt to cap, or you can walk into the building to clear out more people. If you're on A side, to avoid this, go the opposite direction, but rush it, skip A. Head directly to B and watch down the main lane. You'll kill anyone coming up from the middle and still have protection from the sniper area thanks to the crate. It sounds easy enough, but all that being said, this is still stupidly hard to pull off and I've only been able to do it twice out of at least 40 to 50 games that I've written down. You're sitting in basically a wide open space with not much protection. You can be hit from any direction, you're literally in a giant circle with sniper spots looking down on you, surrounding you. Someone can flank you, someone can shoot you from the building, it's just very hard to do. I've never capped this flag by going any other direction. It either takes way too long to make an impact, or I die along the way. The best thing to do, really, is to just rush this flag with your entire team, 
and just cap it right away and spread back out. Spend the rest of the game on the outside parts of the main circle by the crates. This is a lot easier to do if the enemy has A as opposed to C. You get a lot more protection when they have A side. You get a massive element of surprise because most people don't expect having someone in these areas that are highlighted. And now, for the worst of the worst, it's Aftermath. Once again, both sides are the same. Go into the lower area and be ready for rushers hitting B. Clear them out and then hit the cap. If there is no one watching it, you should be in the clear for capture, but get ready to defend it again. Here it is again, but this time I've adjusted my route to check for people coming from the other side. I would definitely do this option opposed to not checking, because if you check, sure, you might lose the gunfight. But if you don't check and there's someone there, you will probably die to the flank. I definitely had help capping this flag, and I will say that I've never capped this by myself. Ever. In both clips, I've had my team rush in to help. The thing that I have been able to do is set my team up to be able to cap, but it generally has been a team effort while capping. You won't cap this solo. You just can't. There are too many variables, too many awkward pathing options, too much is required to go right to cap this by yourself. The best piece of advice I can give is don't be the first person on this cap, ever. Because if you die while capping, that just leaves it wide open for the other team to take. Don't bother taking any other outside route, it takes way too long. Spend the rest of the game running back to the middle of the map, because that's all I ever fucking do. Seriously, this is the one map I have nearly no advice on. If you do control two nodes, get to their side and sit and aim for 5 minutes while they trickle out every 30 seconds. I think I actually hate this map more than Turbine. Whenever I play these maps, I melt down and want a car go kill myself. Aftermath. I'm done! Ah, oh, oh, their maps are done. Yes! Oh, god, yes. Okay, so yeah, I'm done with how it's domination, at least until PS3 gets the uh, the DLC. So, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to see anything in particular? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I know people have requested equipment and score streak usage on maps. I've already started working on that. However, it's mainly going to cover like guardian use, sentry use choke points, and just in general map analysis, because most score streaks are situational or global. Lightning Strike shouldn't go in the same spot every time, it depends where the enemy is, like Hellstorm also. UAVs, EMPs, global. Choppers, Swarms, Canines, global. So, yeah, that's, that's in the works. I'll probably do live commentaries in place of how to domination until I get the DLC. And, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy ride getting through all these maps, and I hope the content has been worth watching. I've gotten a lot of nice comments and messages saying how much it's helped for some players, so, yeah, I hope it's been worth watching. Until next time, thanks for watching.